Are you ready for some good news? Get wisdom, and many other good things will likely follow. Wisdom's the treasure, but when you get the treasure of wisdom, usually there are many other treasures that follow along. What we're talking about today is what you want most. And what you want most determines so much about how you live your life and what you end up actually getting. And so in Proverbs 3, Solomon is saying to us that there are some wonderful things that you might want in life, riches and honor and long life and pleasantness and just blessedness in general. But what he's saying is that while these things might be well and good, they are the lesser treasures. And what he invites us into is pursuing the greater treasure of wisdom. So wisdom is here personified for the sake of of giving a picture. Wisdom is like a woman who is lovely and to be wanted. And it almost has the sense of romantic Uh, attraction in this image and if you hold fast to her well this is all imagery of desire of wanting something God isn't against desire he created it see God himself has a will and to have a will means to want something And 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 the stronger your will about something the more you want it and God has a strong will and a strong desire, and he made you in his image. And part of what it means to be in the image of God is you also have a will. And it's good to have a will. It's good to have deep desire. It's a, it's a sign of something that's healthy. It's not bad, it's good if you want things. It's important that a baby wants milk. If a baby doesn't want milk, then the baby's sick. It's important to want things. If you've ever been even mildly depressed, you know that your will begins to diminish. Your capacity to want things, your longings diminish. And if you get deeply depressed, you can lose interest not only in the hard things in life, but even in the easy good things. You can lose interest in in something as simple as a good meal or spending time with friends. People, they get depressed, they lose their will and ultimately... Some lose their will to live. So having a will, having a want, a desire within you is a good thing. It's a mark of health. But what's equally clear in the scripture, beloved, is that this doesn't mean that Christians are immune from suffering and that this doesn't mean that there's some kind of guarantee of wealth. Not at all. Um, Jesus said, in this world, you'll have trouble. Paul and most of the faithful disciples, they suffered, and they suffered greatly. Um, Paul even would speak openly about his sufferings. He was criticized. How could you be a super apostle if you've been suffering so much? Jesus even said, blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness' sake. And Jesus himself warned about the love of money, explained about the difficulties that can come to those that are rich, and he continually talked about our care for the poor and demonstrated a life of of giving. So we have both these things. See, here's where abundant life comes. God has a will and you have a will. And when your will starts being the same as God's will, when you want what God wants, you're now connecting to what God really wants to give you and therein comes the abundant life. So, First, God loves to share wisdom, hunger for it. Secondly, I think we can clearly see this, that prosperity, and by this we include perhaps financial, economic success, or um, physical prosperity, or emotional well-being, relational well-being, shalom, all of this might be in it. This type of thing may very well be a byproduct of wisdom, but it's a byproduct And by saying it's a byproduct, we mean it's something that follows after the priority of the wisdom itself. 
You see, God's not a vending machine. I think some people, they, they get an idea that Christianity is this thing where you do your part and God does his part. But God doesn't relate to us quid pro quo. I do something for you, you do something for me, vice versa. He's not a vending machine you put your coins in and then you get your candy bar out. If people put coins in and they don't get their candy bar out, they get mad. You ever seen videos of what people do to, to vending machines when they put their money in and don't get it? It's pretty comical. They attack it. They karate chop it. They hit it. There was one person who attacked a vending machine and it fell over on them and killed them. God's not a vending machine. You're not putting in your quarters and doing your acts of obedience and paying your tithes and lifting up your, your righteousness and, and do enough of that and then you get back from God prosperity. Not at all. That's not, God's a person. He is the treasure. He is the wisdom. And you pursue him and, and get him, get Christ, get wisdom. And it may be that many of these good things follow, but if you pursue the fruit, you might get some of the fruit, but miss the treasure. How good and glorious is the grace of God, for that's what matters in the end. Get wisdom, and many other treasures may follow, and that's the gospel.